yeah, the world's just a little crazy right now, so this is actually perfect timing to talk about some of this. Maybe a little bit late, maybe like two weeks too late. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're glad we can. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about why we prepare. Um, first of all, our leaders are supposed to, right? And hello for the things that President Nelson has said lately that are coming true in ways that we didn't anticipate. Isn't that interesting? The vitamins, all that kind of thing. It's like, oh, he was literal. <laughs> it wasn't just like, just a kind of a, a quip thing, you know? This was actually literal, okay. Um, and also so they will be useful to our families and others in emergency. Like you've all been saying, you cannot find anything in the store right now. So if you've prepared ahead of time, you're gonna have stuff to be able to help because I don't think it's just gonna be our families that we're probably gonna be helping, probably other people as well. Uh, and you know, this emergency, I kind of almost feel like this is a fire drill. You know, mm -hmm. we still can go to a store, the water still works, the right. lights are still on, right. you know, there's like, yeah, there's still gas in the cars. I, I feel it's like, it's almost like a fire drill sort of thing where it's just preparing us for something that is going to be more catastrophic and even have a greater effect, which I know today feels like what could even have a greater effect. Well, there's a lot of things that can have a greater effect. <laughs> there's, for sure. there's a lot of things. So this is a fire drill, and, and I thought it was really interesting when you made a comment that said, wow, we're supposed to be like the most prepared state. Mm -hmm. And the shelves are clean, and it's insanity. People, we had rumor, I don't know if it was true or not, that there was fighting in Costco last night, so they had to close it. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so even if we can go to the store tomorrow, people are still fighting today. And this preparedness is pretty important. Um, the other thing is something called normalcy bias. And you may have heard about it before. One of my favorite stories about normalcy bias is a man who was in um, the Malibu, California area. And one of those huge wildfires was coming toward his home. And it was predicted that they were his home was going to be burned. And so they came through and they told everybody to evacuate. Everybody to evacuate. And that they had three hours before the fire was probably going to be there. Well, he spent two hours and 50 minutes pacing in front of the TV watching CNN, saying there's no way it could happen, there's no way it could happen, there's no way it could happen. Spent the last 10 minutes throwing his dogs and you know, like his essential papers in the car and hightailing it out of there. So we had three hours, but because of normalcy bias, because our mind tells us it's never happened before, it won't happen. Well, like I said, that's why I think this is a little bit of a fire drill because now we can say it has happened before. So now we aren't gonna do this because I literally experienced it today. Um, and yesterday too, have you guys noticed that? Like you cannot get anything done. Yeah. I cannot get anything done. Every yeah. two minutes I'm checking my phone and I've got two weddings, you know, so people are beating back and forth. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't get anything done. And my nerves are just frayed. And you know, it's like three o'clock. I finally said, I gotta go get a shower. <laughs> like, I gotta be coming in an hour. I mean, you know, what in the world? So I really even felt it today. I went, wow, this is so crazy. You cannot, like your brain can't work right when everything changes. Yeah. You know, it just can't work right. So we have to have everything already here, already prepared, already learned because our brains just don't work right. Anyway, I just told Steve that today. I was like, I'm experiencing, I'm experiencing normalcy bias today. Yeah. It's crazy. Um, so what is an emergency? Pretty much anything that varies from our normal life. So, you know, natural disasters, other disasters, loss of employment, that's an emergency. And unfortunately right now, this, this change is going to lead to employment loss for a lot of people. I'm already looking at 30 people I employ and going, what do I do? I can't afford to pay their, their wages, you know, if we do nothing and if we have no money coming in and some of my team members are paycheck to paycheck and I'm telling them, do you have food at home? Do you have, you know, because even this brings, and I had never thought about that before. I just thought loss of employment would mean I lost my job. I didn't think it would mean something major would happen and nobody could work. So there's a lot of reasons that it could be loss of employment. And then economic downturn, which we're right smack in the middle of right now. So there's a lot of things that constitute an emergency. So what should you store? You know, there's so many preparedness topics you can talk about, but everybody thinks about food, right? Everybody goes to Costco. In fact, somebody texted me today and said that they just went to the store. This is a gentleman who lives in New York, so he doesn't really know anything about us, uh, about our preparedness efforts. And he said, I just went to the store. All the canned goods are gone. All the cleaning supplies are gone. There's lots of cakes and pies left. <laughs> so apparently nobody's having a coronavirus party. <laughs> I am. I thought pies to the kitchen. I thought pies to my party. That was in my car. Well, someone oh, takes it emotionally. You have to prepare for the emotional food. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, I've got all that stuff. I was like, I need some chocolate. Well, apparently no 
nobody else is going there because they're just needing all the cans and the hand sanitizer. So it's good. You're in the good place then if you can buy pies. <laughs> you can have a nice time. wait a long line <laughs> to get the pies, unfortunately. Yeah. So what kind of food should you store? For sure, three-month food, and hopefully these are things that you just have on hand all the time. You know, this is the short-term food storage. So it's the stuff you can... Open a can, you can dump it into a bowl, and you can eat it. Um, it wouldn't be tasty, perhaps cold, but you know what? You could eat it if you had to. Uh, seasonings, super important. Uh, I told my kids, I'm like, okay, we're tightening, tightening the belt, kids. You know, we're not going out to eat, we're not going to whatever. And they're like, what are we going to eat? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe food, it's in our house. <laughs> you know, but we have nothing in our house. Oh, yes, we do. But part of it is they just think, oh, it's just going to be, you know, this stuff, you know, cans of rice, cans of beans, bags of wheat. So, you know, store things like this that you can flavor things with, bouillon and, you know, things that actually make food taste good. Because the long-term food storage items, they can get pretty old and pretty drudgery, I think. Some fruit, some things that can liven it up. So that's short-term stuff, some stuff you can easily make, easily cook. And that's probably what we're going to be using for the next little while right now. Mm -hmm. You know, that short-term stuff. Just the, the stuff you can easily throw in something, you can easily cook. I mean, we can still go to the store. May change, but we can still go to the store right now. Hopefully we can still for a while. Then the second version of food storage is the long-term stuff. That's the stuff that you all know about. You know, the freeze-dried things, the big old number 10 cans. So in the handout that I have there, I have a short-term food storage guide um, that walks you through some ideas of what to have on hand for a short-term emergency. These are probably some of the things that people are buying the stores out of right now. Uh, some of the things to, to make note of are oils, cooking oils. Uh, we don't think about that all the time. Some meats, things that can give uh, some protein. That's sometimes things we don't think about either. We think about the rice, the beans, the, you know, that sort of thing, but we don't think about protein. Uh, also some variety foods, things like dry fruits, things that can give some variety. So this is just a nice guide that shows amounts that you should just think, okay, how much do I have? Do I have any of that? Or maybe I should think about that. Some of the things on this next page are, you know, barbecue sauce, mustard, ketchup, things to make it taste good. And then some snacks, some chocolate, for sure. <laughs> chocolate should be on there, some pies, you know. But also things like toilet paper. Everybody's buying out all the toilet paper nowadays. So, you know, it would have been nice to stock up on it about a month ago, yeah. you know. <laughs> but things like shampoo and conditioner, feminine, feminine hygiene items. We just had a discussion about that last night. Like, oh, gosh, we better get some of that. Uh, cleaning supplies, particularly disinfectants like Lysol. We just tried to buy some for our office this morning and there is none to be found anywhere. So those are things to store from a three month standpoint. A long term stand, long term storage. So I also have an inventory on here that lists long term food storage. This is amount for a year for an adult for a year. This is an amount for an adult for three months. So the way you use this is you just multiply the number in your family by the amount for either three months or, or a year. I did this probably about four years ago and it was super overwhelming um, just to see the amount of things that were recommended that I should get for my family. But because I was looking at large amounts, I was able to get them in big quantities, like big buckets. I have a whole bunch of big six gallon buckets of beans and rice and different things. And so it was much less expensive because I did that. So I encourage you just to plan it out and then pick one thing. You know, okay, this, nobody's buying, you know, evaporated milk right now. Okay, I'm going to go figure out how much evaporated milk I need and I'm going to go buy it right now. Just start to just, you know, check off the list and see what you have. And you may already have a lot of these things, but this is just a little bit of a guide to say, okay, where am I? Where am I in, the, in that storage, in that planning? Michelle, mm -hmm. the, when Darren bids, they have a list for you that you so can go nice. every month and get. Like a 12 month thing? Mm -hmm. So and nice. so you can go every month and, and it will say, okay, now get this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. And so that's nice mm -hmm. because all those things are 30 years, except for just a few things, like the pancake mix. A few and, things, yeah. Yeah. So and it's the cheapest place to get it absolutely. anywhere. Absolutely. Hands down. And they just expanded their hours. When I was doing this a few years ago, they had really weird hours, just a couple of nights a yeah. week. Now yeah. they're there every day of the week. Yeah, except Friday. Except Friday. Yeah. But that doesn't make you think about something, though. Come on in. <laughs> they should think. Hmm, if they're yeah. expanding their hours, if yeah. they're making this really available, exactly. then perhaps we should be taking advantage of it. Yeah. So you can just go in and you, when they're open and, and buy. Or you can just, they give you a form and you fill it out what you want to buy and 
they take you around and the they guys load it, it and they won't let you load it in your car. They come out with you and load it. But yeah, there's senior missionaries that run it and they're anxious to help. They haven't run out of beer. <laughs> yeah, so I was going to say. Yeah. 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 Do you know what time they close? It varies by day. So look oh. it up on the website. Yeah. Just look up Linden. Linden Home Storage Center, I think yeah. is what it's called. Linden Home Storage Center. It varies by the day, but their hours are much expanded from what they used to be. And I much easier to get there. Yeah. I, when I went, just because ever since the coronavirus hit in China, I started thinking, hey, it's we, coming. I, yeah, and I, my kids, my married kids don't have a food supply, uh, so I started going, okay. So that's why I've been going there. And getting it, and it is more expensive than getting by the bucket holes. Like you can buy yeah. a bag of it and put it in a bucket. It's more expensive than that, but how they have it canned, it will last thirty years. Yeah, because in a bucket, so, it isn't. Yeah, it isn't oxygen yeah. sealed. Right. Yeah. So that's that's super good information. And when you're there, sign up for their newsletter, or you can sign up online too. If you go to Linden Food Storage Center online, they have a newsletter, and it is good. Like they had a whole bunch of, I think they, they highlight different things they sell. And last month was sugar. And everybody said, well, I think people know what to do with sugar. But then they listed a whole bunch of recipes and I thought, yeah. these sound really good. Did you read the those? Oatmeal. They sounded good, yeah, didn't they? they? Amazing. Yeah, amazing. and they're all out of the foods that they make, yeah. that they, that they yeah. sell there. So yeah, it's a really, really good new resource that we need to use. We need to really use that. And Michelle, they also let you know of sales. Like, yeah, on their yeah. newsletter. Yeah. went on sale like yeah. last year or something. Yeah. So you stock up on those. So it's good to know what those. Yeah, that newsletter is really good. And I can tell that they have somebody new doing it because it's all of a sudden gotten like four times longer. Yeah. A whole bunch more information. But I love it. It's so good. Yeah, yeah. that's why I like about it. Yeah. It's really good. Before it was just kind of little bits, but now yeah. it's lots more information. Yeah. yeah it's so really I'm good. not a milk drinker, but dried milk. Is it gross? Do you drink it? Or is it just for cooking? It's for recipes. Okay. Yeah. It's yeah. like, add a little fat to the recipes. And <laughs> or, you know, if you're completely out, like I went and got a little half gallon today because Brittany was out of milk and Jack is drinking milk. Yeah. He's just rolling. And so I went and that's the only thing they had left was just half? this one yeah. little half, half gallon, gallon of yeah. pork. And yeah. so that's what I was seeing. We got a lot of cereal at our house. And so I went I actually <laughs> went and got her some powdered milk from my storage and I yeah. said, It's not gonna taste great if you just mix it up, but if you mix it up and keep it cold in the fridge, yeah. it's ice even you better. Can. Ice it tastes yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. It definitely yeah. tastes different. It it does. Does. No, no, I can't drink just milk. Yeah. If you mix it up in a blender, it tastes better yeah. too. It kind of aerates it, yeah. it makes it taste mm. better. Add a little vanilla or something. Yeah. 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 A little chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of chocolate. A lot of chocolate. Yeah, if you're desperate, you'll drink it. You know, yeah. that's yeah. kind of what a lot of these foods are in here because people ask me all the time, well, what if I can't eat gluten? What if I, you know, I want healthier food storage? You know, at some point it's food or nothing. Yeah. yeah. You know, healthier food yeah, storage, exactly. I guess, is air. Mm -hmm. And that's not going to get you very far. Yeah. So this is probably going to be better than air. Yeah. Um, some of the things that aren't on these lists, though, cooking, uh, the things to cook with, like I said, spices and seasonings. You can get spices in great big packages. That's what I did for my kids that are getting married. Um, big spices and things because they're pretty cheap. And you can, it's amazing what you can make taste good with a, just a few spices. <laughs> you can actually make something that somebody wouldn't eat taste like, oh, pretty good. The other thing is salt. Lots and lots of salt. Mm -hmm. And not just the salt that we say, you know, that are on these lists to store. Go to Costco when it's not insane in three months. Go to Costco and get the big um, 50, ga 50 pound bags of salt. I store one of those per person in my family mm -hmm. because salt is not only good for flavoring foods, it enhances the flavor of foods, but it's good for preserving mm -hmm. foods. Mm -hmm. It's good for a ton of things, so you need a lot of salt. And they lay flat, I've learned this, you can lay them like above all the rest of the foods, just salt bags, because they're really, really useful. So those are some of the things that may not be on that list. Other things are cooking supplies and implements. One thing for sure is a can opener. I just stored like five of them, because can you imagine like chipping your way into one of these babies? <laughs> yeah. Without a can opener every single day with a knife, you know, and how many fingers are lost in that process? I'm trying to get that lid off. So store a bunch of can openers. Store some things to cook the food in. Easy stuff. Um, easy ways to cook. Uh, you know, this is talking if we don't have electricity like we do right now. 
But easy ways to cook. There's butane, there's propane, there's you know other things to do. Store a couple of ways to do that so that you can still eat that food if the electricity would go out. Recipe books, oh, I did bring one. Um, I actually have some recipe books, so remind me I'll get some at the end if anyone's interested. But I'm also gonna send a whole bunch of um, recipes through email. It was just too many pages to print off for everybody, but I have some books left over from a few years ago when I was, when we, I was doing them for the ward. Uh, so if anybody needs one, but there's some really good shelf-stable recipes, so it's shelf-stable food, stuff like this that you're, you know, you're using and also recipes that only use food storage. So to me, those are really useful because you know you look at those that food storage sometimes and you can only see like one thing. You know, this will make me one thing and I'm really tired of that one thing. And there's a lot of things it actually can make. It talks about, you know, like 15 different ways to use wheat. <laughs> so that's, that's useful information. Uh, so I'll email those, but then I have a few extra books left too. So what else should be stored or prepared um, one of the things that people often don't think about is seeds. So I already have some things growing in my backyard because I planted early this year. Um, but the stuff that I have growing now, they're actually the fast growing things, lettuce, radishes, that sort of thing. Um, it's gonna be a couple months before I'm eating that. Maybe a month before I'm eating lettuce, you know? So everybody says, oh, well, I'll just plant some food in my in my yard if I, if I, uh, if we don't have any food. Easier said than done. Um, it's actually, it takes a little while to get food from seeds. But I, I uh, challenge you to store some seeds. And the important thing about seeds, if you don't are familiar with seeds, is that you, uh, you store survival seeds. Um, the, you'll, you'll see them called heirloom or non-hybrid, that's the kind you want to store. And the reason is you can buy these sorts of things. You don't have to buy them like this, but you can buy these sorts of things. I keep it in my freezer. Um, the reason you want heirloom or uh, non-hybrid seeds is because hybrid seeds will not, um, so they will not replicate. So if you pull a corn, a piece of corn off of a corn husk that's a heirloom seed and you plant it in the ground next year, it will grow a plant. If you pull it off of a hybrid, corn, a corn cob of corn and plant in the ground, it will not grow. It's sterile. So you have to save heirloom or hybrid or non-hybridized seeds to be able to then save seeds because that's the only way to perpetuate that. You Do you have any plant. good places to buy them though? Because yes. I've looked online and I just, there's places but I just don't know. Like, this is my favorite ever. So the other thing I do is when I plant every year then I just save because I don't always plant everything. You know, like, well, this is a good one for a good example. I don't plant all of the seeds in my zucchini seeds in a packet <laughs> because I get enough out of two plants. So I just saved the rest of these. This is from Baker Creek Seeds, Baker Creek Heirloom Seed, every single seed in their entire catalog, and their, their catalog is two inches thick. It's so like it's my Christmas Baker present. Baker, Baker Creek, oh, Creek, Baker Creek, Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds. Every single thing in their entire seed catalog is heirloom. So you don't have to try and filter through, is this, hybrid or not, every single thing in their catalog is, is what you're gonna want. I absolutely love these seeds because the, the foods, that, the, the things that you get from these are beautiful because they're old style stuff, you know? They're the, they're the really neat things that um, people used to grow. Watermelons with seeds in them, imagine that, a seed in a watermelon. <laughs> it's really hard to plant a seedless watermelon seed next year. So, <laughs> and do they really produce like the other? Because I bought some heirloom stuff and they're really disappointed. Really? With how it grew. These so, do. Okay. These do. And how long can you keep seeds like that? So, what's going to happen is that they're going to, the germination will go down every year. Meaning, you know, the very first year I might get 80% of the seeds germinated, and the next year maybe 60%, the next year maybe 40%. Okay. But you're going to get some. Even I had a friend, her, her uh, husband, his father had this family heirloom tomato. And when he died, like the year before he died, he pressed some of the seeds between two paper towels. And he had had those in his for you know, storage for probably 30 years. And his son thought, will these still grow? Plant them, sure enough, they still grew. They have, they find wheat in Egyptian tombs that still germinate. So that's why I just keep them all, <laughs> because I just never know, yeah. you know. And I just keep them in my cold storage so that they're cooler, and because you just never know. I might, you know. Need so is it these. best to keep them like in a cold storage or like in a freezer? Mm -hmm. 
Well, my freezer space is limited, so I have more space in my cold storage, you know, shoved okay. back in a corner than I do my freezer, but you can put them in a freezer too. Okay. Yeah. Oh, the next thing on that is sprouting. So um, that is the way, like I said, I have already planted seeds probably, I don't know, three weeks ago or more outside. That's going to be another month before I get food out of it. The way you can get food quickly that's fresh food is by sprouting. And you don't have to have a sprouting container like this. I, I have this and it's pretty nasty looking. But, um, because it gets used. But all you need is literally a mason jar with a way to filter the top. And the way you sprout seeds, so you can sprout anything. Any of these seeds that are, you know, we just look at them and go, oh, that's wheat. Well, you could sprout wheat. Have you ever heard of wheat grass? That's what it is. Um, it's just, it's just sprouted wheat. It will give you greens very, very quickly. You'll have greens within a few days on a sprout. So you can sprout pretty much any seed that hasn't been radiated. Um, it's nice to have a few of these others because, oh, like broccoli sprouts, you probably bought broccoli sprouts before, or radish sprouts, you probably bought those in the store before. You know, there's my radish seeds right there. So if I were to pack these radish seeds, they're gonna sprout really quickly and we can actually eat those sprouts and give us a lot of good nutrients and nutrition. We'll talk about why that's so important in just a minute. But all you need is a mason jar and a filter over top. You put the seeds in the jar, you cover them with water, and you rinse them, so you dump it out twice a day, rinse them off, and then fill them back up with water again. You do that twice, and then you just let them sit, and they're gonna, they're gonna sprout. And it literally is as simple as that. And don't very do very much. Do like a teaspoon of seeds in the bottom of a quart-sized mason jar, and you'll have a jar full of sprouts within five days. So if you cannot get fresh food, sprouts are the very best thing to start with. Okay, can I, I just wanna make sure I'm understanding what you're saying. Yep. So you put it in a jar, rinse it, twice a day for so, two days. Yep, yep. Okay. And then you just, full do you feel it just? Just cover the seat with water for the first two days. And then you're just gonna drain it, cover, drain, cover. And then after that, you're just gonna make sure they stay moist. You're gonna see that they that they get wet. You're gonna drain them off. Let them, just like if you think about plants, you're gonna wanna water them every day, or water them twice a day. Put water in, drain them off. Just let them stay moist. So what is the filter? I'm not a green thumb. So you can use anything. What is the filter for? It's to make it so your seeds don't fall out while when you're filtering. You you're oh, that's okay. it. Okay. That's it. I was that's like, it. I didn't know there was a special it. something. Yep, I'm glad you asked. Yep, so you put the seeds in it. You just put something over the top of the jar. So you can turn it over. So that when you do out. this, the, seed, the water comes Got out, it. but the seed doesn't. Got it. That's it. That's so it. I sprout all the time. <laughs> and I actually just take a mason jar and punch holes. In the top of the, the that works the too, and just use it oh. like that. That works too, unless you have tiny, super tiny right. seeds. The yes. super tiny broccolis and radishes will probably fall out of that. But actually, I do broccoli them. seeds, they and they don't. The mm -hmm. Okay, okay, you're the pro then. So what's the other tips? My <laughs> husband loves. I don't know. He thinks it makes you so you don't get cancer. Broccoli sprouts. So I he eats them all the time. Well, that's that's good. Right. Good. No, I get. Yeah. Do you have any other tips? The broccoli will grow in the no, but it works. Do you just I rinse them? Do you just rinse them like twice a day? And actually, I just originally put them in with water for about four hours, drain them off, and then I just rinse them twice a day. Rinse them twice a day? Yeah. Well, so five days for sprouts. You're not going to grow plants. This is paint strainer bags. Just the top. Yeah. There's another use for this too. You can eat them. But, um, like they are. They're sprouts. Cheesecloth, any sort of porous fabric. Anything like that's gonna okay. work for a filter. Any kind of that. Okay. Yeah, sprouts. You're, yeah, you're gonna eat them because it, it's green. It's green nutrients. There's there's a lot of nutrients that are in greens that you can't get in anything else that you can never get out of a can. It's just, it's, it's, it's impossible to. So you need some green stuff. So that's why it's sprouts. So Robin was saying she just soaks her seeds for about four hours, drains them off, and then just every, twice a day. Twice a day. Yeah. yeah. And, and they will grow, grow won't they? In your salads. Is that how I eat? Yeah. Or he just eats them. <laughs> Yeah, you can eat them, you can throw them in sandwiches. I put them in smoothies. Can... smoothies. I make smoothies and throw them in smoothies. I love them on sandwiches, too. Yeah. Yeah. Throw them on top of it, like a rice bowl, we'll so throw them on the top of that. You can do sprouts for any seeds? Any seed will sprout, but there's some that taste much better than others. Yes. Yeah. But broccoli's a good one. What other? Broccoli's a good one. Radish is a good one. Um, barley will sprout. I'm trying to think what are the ones that are in my... I have a couple of mixes. What other ones do you do, Robin? I just do broccoli. Just so do you broccoli. just buy broccoli seeds See, somewhere? Not, you can buy sprouting seeds, special sprouting seeds. Yeah, go on Amazon. Amazon. Amazon's the place now. Yeah, Amazon. 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 Amazon, just type in sprouting seeds. I have like a five gallon bucket that I have of sprouting seeds because I know that's the stuff that's going to be useful in an emergency. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, you just use a little bit, like literally yeah. a, a tablespoon, a teaspoon yeah, max in a in a jar because it'll fill up. Mm. Yeah, and it is nutrients, it's live nutrients. Mm. So those are things people just don't think about storing. It's really, but you have you need to have some live stuff in your storage. Okay, now let's talk about medicines. Hmm, this is always the fun part. Uh, you can store as many medicines as you want, but um, I've given you a couple pages of emergency prep medicines and remedies, some things to have on hand and reasons to have them on hand. <laughs> this is where <laughs> I could definitely improve mm -hmm. on some of this stuff. So let's just go through a few of these for the herbal first aid kit. Um, activated charcoal. That is just what it sounds like. <laughs> it's the thing that you give that will absorb whatever's in your gut. So we're all eating emergency foods, that sort of thing, and maybe a time that we actually eat something that's gone bad or something happens or we have a big problem with our gut. Activated charcoal is wonderful for that. You literally just drink it, eat it. Arnica is where do you get yeah, like this kind of stuff? Amazon. Just Amazon. Okay, it's because Amazon, Amazon, right? right? Everything in what the world is Amazon. What does activated charcoal look like? Is it's black, black powder. Oh, it's a powder. And you mix it with water or something? Mm -hmm. So it stays the expiration stays forever. Forever. Okay. forever and ever and ever. Yeah. The other thing it's really good for is filtering water. So it's a really good thing to have on hand. I have it in my water filtration box because when you layer if you layer um, like t-shirts and some dirt and some activated charcoal, you'll be able to filter water with it too. It's really good absorbent. It absorbs a lot. Arnica, and so, and dirt. Yeah. <laughs> Back up. I'm, I'm, a filter. I'm on a level filter. one. I'm not at yeah. 300 level classes. I'm at like 100, 100. level yes. classes. If you need to filter, you can make layers of filter things to put to pass water through. Like if you were to pull water off of your gutter and think, mm -hmm. okay, how am I gonna break this up? You make, um, you put in a bucket a t-shirt and then you put some clay and then you put another t-shirt and then you put some charcoal and then you put another t-shirt and some rocks and then you dump the water through that. Because oh, so it's gonna time absorb. It the by the time it gets to the bottom, it's taken out all the nasties. Not, it hasn't purified it. Like it hasn't taken out the bugs, but it's taken out the bits and sticks things. and dirt and that um, sort of stuff. So that bucket thing that we got from you, if you same thing. It already does that. Yep. No t-shirts involved. No t-shirts. <laughs> You're good. No t-shirts. I just want to know. I mean, I have t-shirts, but I'm just, I'm okay. <laughs> so good. Yes. What? Like how much of this activated charcoal? It's just I mean, how much would you? You know, I mean, I have a bag. Okay. So we're not talking like it's five. Gallons. No, I have, I have a, I have okay. a bag that's, you know, maybe, maybe like this big. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Not a ton. Mm -hmm. Arnica. You may have heard of Arnica. It's, it's a, it's a plant, but it's often, most often used as a homeopathic medicine. Um, Arnica Montana. It is absolutely incredible for muscle pain, bruising, that sort of thing. This is, uh, if you're not familiar with homeopathy, this is a homeopathic um, pellet. Is what they're called. They're just little, little tiny round pellets. And what they are is they're the, they're the, it gets a little weird when you talk about homeopathy. It's the frequency of the thing um, because it works like a vaccine. So you know how vaccines, they give you a little bit of something so that your body becomes immune to it. Mm -hmm. Same sort of thing with homeopathy, but it's, it's way, 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 way less than, than a vaccine. There's not even really any in here. It's just kind of the frequency of the thing. So it tells your body, okay, do this now. I actually use this for patients at work and they don't bruise after major dental surgeries when they use this. So oh. it works. So Can you would eat it? one of those? It's right it's there. there. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just need to find it. Right. Yeah, they just absorb. Hmm? You just put don't it in your mouth. It, though. Oh, oh yeah, don't touch it. Yeah. Oh yeah, so some things about oh, homeopathy. Okay. Yeah, you just put them in your mouth and it just dissolves. Yeah. Um, okay, so don't so touch them like I just did. You dump them in the lid and then you just dump them into your mouth. And you should have them about 15 minutes away from food. So the reason is, is because the food has its own frequencies and it kind of screws up what this is doing. So it should just be at 15 minutes after or before you eat. We'll talk about some other homeopathy in just a minute when we talk about food stuff. So Arnica can be used in a lot of different ways. There's creams, there's all sorts of things. Just look, you know, just start playing around with some of this stuff. Cayenne powder. So this is a cayenne tincture I have. It's 
got some serious potency to it. Mm -hmm. I also have an infection fighter tincture that I that I make that has cayenne in it. My kids like if I come at them with that, they just like run screaming from the room. <laughs> <laughs> and if I say, well, if you're sick enough, you'll take it. <laughs> and I down it. But uh, cayenne is extremely good for speedy recovery. So cayenne, you may just have in your your uh, spice cabinet. Very very good for speedy recovery. Chamomile. Chamomile is a flower. Um, they grow. I've seen them actually growing wild in a lot of yards around here. I go and try to, you know, if the world comes to an end, I need to know what yard I'm going to go to. <laughs> so <laughs> so I, I spot these on locks. <laughs> actually, there's there is a, a yard a couple of blocks over that has a lot of stuff actually near you. Uh, <laughs> I don't know where. I don't know where. I've never been there. Inside. Because I would not know a cabinet if I saw one. Somewhere near your backyard. Uh, anyway, um, so chamomile is really good for calming things. So it's for teething, for calming crying babies that have colic, for calming stomachs. It's really good for calming. And um, I'll talk in a minute about some different ways. This is the sort of this is the sort of stuff that even if you just get this right now, then there's ways to use it. And you know the cool part about with our world right now, even if the world's coming to an end, we still have the internet. Yeah. You know what I mean? How cool is that? You can type in what to do with chamomile, and you'll have 15,000 references right there at the touch of your fingertips, you know? So it, it's really cool. You can throw this in a tub of water and it relaxes you. Um, anyway, there's cool things. Comfrey. If anyone wants to know where comfrey is, Ludie Larson's entire ditch bank is lined with comfrey. Really? The entire ditch bank is lined with comfrey. Comfrey is one of the most important things ever in healing. It's called bone knit. That's what the pioneers used to call it, was bone knit. And um, and actually will heal broken bones and injuries. Her entire you ditch bank is lined. Or you not. can. I yeah. The, the the government will tell you no, but you can. So you like you make poultices. It a it's that? a it's a tall, long green stem. It does have flowers. If in the summer it'll flower a purple flower. Um, but the leaves are the things you want, and they're really funky. We grow them out here now and feed them to our chickens because it keeps them really healthy. But when you break the the stem of it, it like. It's so weird to even, I can't even almost describe it. It's like it has strings inside that like pull apart and then like snap when they break. It's really interesting. But you, the best use for it is a poultice. So you rub it together and make kind of a paste out of it. You put it right where the problem is, wrap it with cloth, saran wrap, whatever it is, and leave it there. I've left that overnight on like a sprained ankle. The next morning you wake up, it's almost gone. My word. It's really cool stuff. So can you get this on Amazon too? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so or Lily's yard. Yeah. Lily's yeah. ditch. Go so to if stitch. you got something like that on Amazon, would it be like in the dried form? Yeah. It's I gonna it's like gonna be like in something like this. You know, I've got so I didn't pull them all out because I ran out of time. I mean you so wouldn't be yeah. getting leaves sent to you that you get to snap and No, no, you're yeah. gonna get a dried form, but then you're gonna put that in with the tincture water. with water, with the paste, and you're and gonna put that on. Make that so so what if you get it out of Ludie's ditch? It's way better than the dried stuff. But how do you 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 just, you just rub it sure. together? Just, you just rub it. And make just like that. I mean think about that. You know, if you rub a leaf together enough, you know, it just kinda makes a pasty stuff. And you stick that yeah, right but on. you use that as needed. You can't store. Could you? You can store the dry stuff. But you can store. If you store the dry could stuff. Could you dry it? Like pick mm -hmm. it out of leaves Absolutely. and then dry it and then Absolutely. store it? Absolutely. Yep. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Comfrey is amazing. It's amazing, and it reduces healing time, it reverses infection. It's it's amazing stuff. Eucalyptus. <laughs> So eucalyptus oil is the best way to do it because we don't grow eucalyptus here because we're not in Australia um, or China, thankfully. But um, the essential oil is really good. It can be diluted and it's one of the very best things for respiratory problems because it opens up the respiratory passages. So right now, you know, we're talking about coronavirus. It's a respiratory disease. And we'll get to it in a minute, but it's actually they're finding, I was just a huge, huge um, medical dental meeting last weekend. And so I got a lot of information. I was there with these Nobel winning uh, virologists got a lot of kind of insider stuff. And what they're finding is antivirals aren't working on it very well. So they think it's a what's called a carrier virus, meaning it's taking bacteria into the lungs and the bacteria are the thing that are taking people down. So it's a bacterial infection in the lungs that's actually causing most of the deaths and fibrosis and so it's bacterial. So you've got to treat the lungs. Eucalyptus is one of the very best things to treat, to treat lungs. Um, you can put it on the feet, you can put it on the chest, but it's really good in um, a pan over the stove. 
and you put a towel over your head and you just let oh, it steam. Let it steam and just get it up into your nose and down into your chest. It'll open up those nasal those passages and, and get everything out, get everything cleaned out. Ginger. Ginger's wonderful. Excuse me. I actually do freeze ginger, so I cut it up and throw it in the freezer and it stays forever that way. Um, but you can also buy it. I, actually, this is ginger. This is ginger root, which is what you want with ginger root. Um, you can use this dried too in the stores forever. It's really good for nausea. It's good for stomach issues, for, for morning sickness. I think it's also good for getting rid of colds quickly. So ginger is wonderful. Echinacea is an immune stimulator. So it's going to, I think this is echinacea, it's going to improve your immune system, which is really wonderful right now. Um, and prolonged illnesses, it will help shortcut it. Peppermint is really good for digestion. So the easiest way to do it is just an oil. You know, lots of us have oils and, and this is a real common one. It's good for headaches, for digestion, a lot of different things. Just drop it right in your mouth. You can drop it right in your mouth. Because, oh, you get that nice yeah. little yeah. brush I've too. I've used it like on my tongue. I'll just put a drop on my fingertips on yeah, my tongue. It's good stuff. And it just really calms my stomach. Yep, yep, stomach. And you can put it on your stomach, yeah. you can put it on like your head, you can put it on the back of your neck. It'll take care of a lot of muscle problems. Mm -hmm. Plantain is a weed most likely you have in your yard. Um, <laughs> so these, some of these things you're gonna just wanna look up. You know, what does this look like? Because it's not growing right now. Actually, I probably have plantain in my yard right now. <laughs> so, because I have not weeded. Tomorrow was supposed to be the weed day, but it was snowing right now. So it may not be the weed day after all. Um, it's a natural remedy for poison ivy, cuts, scrapes. It's really good on bee bites. So plantain, figure out what it is because it's probably growing in your yard. Is it again something topical? Yes. You would put on okay. you just put right on the bite itself. Okay. Yep, it's a leaf. It um, the best way to describe plantain is it looks like a spinach leaf, but all of the veins come from the center. And so it's kind of a long, skinny spinach leaf, but all of the veins come from the center. It's it's really an odd, it's really an odd looking leaf. When you look at it, you go, Oh, yeah, of course. I've seen that before. I pulled out I pulled it out all the time in my yard, but I didn't know it was so useful. <laughs> So find out what it is. You know, if any, if the world does come to an end, we're gonna all be eating weeds and learning what's really yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you don't need something that kills me, that's why, that's why we gotta learn this. <laughs> Unless it's fast. That's what I say. If I'm gonna eat around me, it better be fast. <laughs> <laughs> good, good point. Slippery elm, um, really good for sore throat, irritated throat, uh, that sort of thing. Um, again, it's just an herb, you just buy it like this in a bag from Amazon. Some other remedies, you may already have apple cider vinegar. Make sure you got the real stuff. So Bragg's apple cider vinegar, it has the mother in it, that's like the slimy thing at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Make sure you have that. It's really good for a ton of things, digestive troubles, indigestion, food poisoning. Um, if you put one teaspoon, it says every hour, that's often, you know, that's, that's a lot, but it will shorten illnesses if you do that. So it's really, I think it's the mother that's doing it, which is a probiotic, which is basically stimulating your own immune system. Vitamin C, um, I can't tell you enough about vitamin C. So vitamin C is the thing that you all should be stocking up on right now. And I don't know if people are or not, but check and see. You can still get it on Amazon. And you can um, still get it like at Smith's and stuff like that. Can you? Mm -hmm. Good, but Yesterday there's some kinds that are much better than others. At this point. So this is what I was reading when I was going into all this food storage stuff. Yep. That doesn't last, but because of the, of the other ingredients in it, it's not, it won't last like 30 years. But I got online on Amazon and bought ascorbic acid, which is vitamin C. It, just, Powder. it comes in a big bag. And it tells you even how to yep. use it, a quarter of a teaspoon in water, yep. or, Thank juice, you for saying or that. juice, or whatever. Yep. So I've got this big bag of it. Yep. Ascorbic. A-S-C-O-R-B-I-C. Ascorbic. Yeah, it just comes in a powder. It's vitamin C. It's, it's exactly, exactly what this is. is. Oh, okay. Yeah. This is basically ascorbic acid mixed with, like, all the stuff to make it into a pellet. You know? <laughs> okay. So, yep, yeah. that's what you want. You just vitamin C it. is your number one defense against the flu, against this virus, against anything. That is your number one defense because what it does is it builds your immune system. It's an antioxidant and these, all these viruses and things, they oxidize or they, um, they create a reaction in your body that leads to illness and destruction. Vitamin C reverses that destruction. So you want vitamin C and lots of it. So I told my kids right now, because we actually have some boxes of oranges in the garage that we've got from my family in Arizona. I said, that's our best medicine right now, guys. We need to be eating eight oranges a day right now. Um, 
because honestly, ascorbic acid isn't as good as the vitamin C you can get from food. But if you can't get it from food, exactly. you get it from yeah. the ascorbic acid. Yeah. And you know, you're right because we bought a bunch of emergency at, at Costco. And if I even have a, just even a little bit of a sore throat, I'll take that yep. like twice a day. And by the next day, I'll have a sore throat. Yep. And it's the number one yeah. thing everyone should be doing right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm it said that chugging it down my kids right now. That's really the only thing you're using to treat the coronavirus because they don't really have any other way of Well, because the antivirals aren't working. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, we're going to get to some treatments too, but yeah, there's things. Aloe vera plant, great for burns and blisters. Epsom salt. Um, Epsom salt is basically magnesium, and magnesium will release, will relax muscles. So it's really good for muscle issues. Hydrogen peroxide. This is an interesting one. Um, you can get this at any, I'm sure people aren't stocking up on this right now. Well, you know, I saw a lady with like 10 of them, and right. I was like, what? I I haven't read this yet, but I'm thinking, yeah, what should you do? Yeah. Right? Now you know why. So it will shorten it? the duration of respiratory illness. Oh. That's why. <laughs> well, what do you do with So you, yeah, put, do you, you can do an ear infection. You, you can do it in, um, well, I actually, I only put the information on hydrogen peroxide. You can drink it. Yeah, just put a little bit of water. Don't put much in, but just put a little bit in, and you know, look it up online too. What do you do with hydrogen peroxide to you know for respiratory illness? It's really good stuff because it's the peroxide. It's the oxidation part again. It's reversing the illness. Interesting. Yep, yep. Baking soda also a really good remedy. Um, super good for heartburn, urinary tract. Um, you can take it internally. Uh, you can use it on as a poultice and put it on bites. It's really good for any spider bites, that sort of thing. So baking soda. I have a huge humongous bag of baking soda. I think it was from Amazon. Do you drink it? <laughs> we're, we're, we are not sponsored by Amazon today. However, <laughs> you wouldn't know it. <laughs> um, coconut oil. Coconut oil is for everything. Not only for cooking, but uh, for face treatment. And it's really good antifungal. It's great. Some other things to have on hand. Super glue. Super glue and a butterfly bandages and you all of a sudden don't have to go to the, the emergency yeah, room yeah. anymore. You know, that's what we told our kids. One of my college boys, you know, he's like, oh yeah, when I come home, this is gonna be so great, the, the, the backyard's great, I'm gonna put up my slack line, I'm gonna do this, whatever, and Steve's like, no you're not, because the emergency room is not the place to go right now. Yeah. <laughs> we don't need a broken bone, we don't need any of that kind of thing going on. So, uh, yeah, we don't wanna be going to there. Strips of uh, cloth, you know, if you have an extra, an old sheet, an old t-shirt, whatever, just cut up the strips, because it's really good for bandages. Wool sleeves from sweaters, are great for holding on ice packs, things like that. Just real okay. random stuff, so just keep stuff. My husband's always like, why are you keeping those old jeans? I'm like, they're so used for it. <laughs> <laughs> Hot water bottles, anime kits, nobody likes that, but you know, it's good to have. Bold syringes, just some, just some things to think. Okay, this is a good recipe for a homemade ice pack. You freeze liquid dish soap or rubbing alcohol and then double bag, Ziploc bag, and it's an ice pack. That way you're not like hurting, on, you know, because it, it will bend to you. And then there's a recipe for homemade neosporin on there. So let's talk a little bit about the way that the recipe goes because it's going to explain some of these other things. So to infuse the herbs into the olive oil, basically what you want to do is you want to get the echinacea, the comfrey, the plantain, remember these are things we've already talked about, calendula, yarrow actually is in my yard, it's in a bunch of other people's yards, rosemary, you know what it is. Um, you put all of those herbs in olive oil. You cover them in olive oil, and this is what happens to it. So this olive oil now becomes filled with the, the good properties of the herbs. Then what you do, and you can do it for, it says, or you can heat it for three hours over low heat. Then you strain the herbs out with a cheesecloth, or this is why I, this is why I have these on hand. These are paint strainers. I didn't, I've never used them for paint. Um, they're, I think, what they dump paint through, and they're super duper cheap. Um, but they're really, really like good filters. Like that or something? Yeah, anywhere that sells paint. They're really good filters. So now you dump this, you know, into here, and all the herbs are gonna stay in the bag, and you're gonna get the olive oil out. You then can use that olive oil mixed with, this is some beeswax, some different things, and you can make, literally, neosporin, your own neosporin. So I have just some of these things on hand. I have paint strainers on hand because now I can use the herbs that I have stored. I have beeswax, this is from Amazon again, you know, there's some yellow beeswax um, on hand because then I can make salves. I have vodka on hand for whichever use you want it for. <laughs> but um, this is how you make tinctures like this, like this cayenne tincture, this is how you make tinctures. 
and it will preserve the cayenne indefinitely pretty much in this. So I just have a few of those things on hand. So if I have to make medicine, I can. Can you, can you explain a tincture to me? Yes. So what a tincture is, is it's the same idea as this, but instead of covering the herb with oil, you cover it with vodka. The vodka makes it preserved, and then you're gonna strain the herb out, and then you're, you're gonna use the alcohol with the good properties from the herb in the alcohol, and you don't have to use very much of it. So like this right here is a tincture. This is an antiviral tincture. Actually, this one's a homeopathic. And you just alive. drink it? This is a tincture. You put like a drop of full in water. Okay, and then drink it. Drink it. Yep, okay. so it gives you concentrated effect from the herbs, and it gives you a way to use it. Because a lot of these things, it's like, well, am I just gonna like chug this herb now? That's you know, how yeah. am I gonna do? So that's why you make these versions of them, the oils, the, the tincture is the most common, or a tea, you can make a tea, but sometimes this stuff tastes really nasty. So a tincture, they taste nasty too, but you just use one dropper full and a whole cup of water, and then it's not yeah. so bad. So that's what a tincture is, it's just the herbs, preserved in something. You can also make it in glycerin. And um, like how long will that keep? A long time. Okay. A long, long time. So I make, I'll make a, and we should probably have a class on tincture sometime if people are interested. Um, because I have a really good um, vitamin C tincture actually that's vitamin C and it uses things like acerola berries and um, camu camu and like the real food stuff and you make it into a tincture. And my kids will actually eat it because it's not too terrible. Um, infection fighter one, anyway, there's, there's, there's remedies you can make out of these things. If you just have these simple ingredients on hand, you can make them. Like, we can be our own doctors. Mm -hmm. Your oil that you do put all the herbs in, do you mm -hmm. chop up the herbs really fine, mm -hmm. or you just throw them in? It depends on the herb. So if there's something oh, like a ginger oil. root, that's not yeah. going to really absorb right. super great, right. you know? But if it's just yeah. like this, you can see that there's, you know, there's no top yeah. of needed on that yeah. one. So it depends on the herb that you're okay. putting in. Right. Some of the herbs, so I have a really, really good uh, tea I make for adrenals, like because when you're just like super stressed out. And, but most of the things in that herb, <laughs> most of the things in that tea are roots, <laughs> like hard roots. We all make that. So, yeah, we all made it right <laughs> outside. <laughs> but I'll just keep coming over. Okay. We'll keep coming. I'm totally coming. Will you miss, she yeah. has two weddings this week. Did you yeah. convince him to do it? I was thinking I'm so about proud that. of you. How are you well, it wasn't my convincing, but like, they're going to let you do the temple ceremony of what I read, but only immediately what about reception. Like, well, one reception we're going to see, the other one's just not going to do it. You did convince them all, everybody's here, just let's do it. I love it. Yep, yep. And then you don't have to stress nearly as long. Yeah. It's you don't have to worry about anything. Yeah, it's just super fast. Well, if you're not having a reception, it's really not. Yeah, just, okay. go, just go get it done. Be done. Yep. So let's talk about flu prevention treatment because nobody's talking about that right now. <laughs> <laughs> so some prevention things, actually. I'm going to look at my sheet so I know what I'm telling you is what I gave you. Yes. All right, hand washing is the number one thing to do is hand washing. The reason is, I've, and I've been explaining this to everybody this week, okay. so a virus, the way a virus is made is the outside of it is made of lipids. What are lipids? Fats. Fats. Yeah. Lipids are fats. So every virus, the outside of the virus is fat. What does soap do? Why do you use soap on a greasy pan? It breaks, it breaks, it breaks, it breaks up the fat. So literally, hand washing with soap will break apart the membrane on the virus and all the insides fall out and it's dead. That's why soap is so important. So, store soap too. <laughs> or learn how to make it. Did anyone see the lady that said, I don't know what you're all worried about. I've been preparing for this forever and she has all her bath and body work. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that soap is good. Yeah. You need soap. <laughs> yep. Christmas soap. So I always, you know, I just, especially for children, remind them, wash before eating, after using the toilet, before preparing food, after touching animals, just whatever. And then when you're out in public, a lot of washing hands. Um, be aware of those you're around, stay at least three feet away. People have all, you know, people have been saying this. Anything that's damp, so for you that's wearing a mask, if it gets damp, you need to get rid of it. Yeah. Because the dampness yeah. actually decreases the... Um, or increases the permeability, so it makes it so stuff will come through. Oh. So if it's damp, you gotta get rid of it. And when, you're, when you discard it, take it off, you know, when she, she's gonna take it off her ears and then throw it away like this, not here, because anything that's here is what you don't want. So throw it away if it gets wet. 
Same with Kleenex, anything just thrown away immediately. Um, build your immune system. So vitamin C, lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of it. Just do lots of vitamin C. Your bowel will tell you when you've had enough. It, it, it usually is about three grams per day for an adult. So this is a thousand milligrams. So this is like three of these tablets. How will you know? You'll be very loose. So <laughs> it'll just tell you, okay, you've had, you've had enough. <laughs> vitamin D3 is the next one that you absolutely need to get right now. So everybody gets vitamin D. Vitamin D is Amazon. so Amazon. Yeah, you can buy it. Yeah, you can buy it anywhere. But yeah, anywhere. vitamin D3. And make sure it's D3. Extremely, extremely useful for your body's immune system. Lots of vitamin D. Bones, too. Bones. Yeah. yeah, that's why I always yeah. tell people, but for right now, immune yeah. system, big time. Is there really yeah. something like year round? It's fine. Just all take the all the time. All okay. The time. Yep. 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 Multivitamin daily, look for a whole food kind if you can find one. Um, but just right now is a great time to take some pills. <laughs> you know, just build your immune system. Magnesium daily. So what does magnesium do? Magnesium cleans everything out, keeps everything moving. It's a really it's a cofactor, so it basically is it's a thing that works in the process of a lot of your a lot of the processes in your body. Magnesium is really good for relaxation as well. Again, if you take too much, you'll know it. So, <laughs> or if you're not moving, take more. So that's a really good tip. If you're not moving, if things aren't moving like they should be, C and magnesium. Because you start eating a lot of this stuff, things aren't gonna be moving the way they used to be moving. And magnesium is fine for kids too. Like all of those are great kids. Okay. Yep, yep. So basically just take the adult dose and cut it in half, half or a third, kid. you know, depending on the size of the kid versus okay. the size of you. Yep. Okay. Healthy liver, big time, because liver is the thing that detoxes all of these things out of our bodies. So, you know, there's liver teas, there's things again on Amazon that you can buy that will just help to strengthen your liver. Milk thistle. Milk thistle is, yep, exactly. Milk thistle, red clover, burdock, plantain. They, you can buy combinations, you know, that they're all together. And you can make it just a nice tea out of it. Eat well. How does it taste? Um, I'm like, thinking about those things on there. Those things don't really have much of a taste, honestly. They're just... Just, yeah, that was yeah. not going to taste good, but it's not going to taste bad. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, those kind of don't really taste. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, food is medicine. So right now, you want a lot of healthy fats, but do not do the unhealthy fats. So corn oil, soy oil, oil canola, they will actually reduce your immune system. You want the healthy fats that are going to strengthen you. Lean meats, lots and lots of plants while we can get them. While we can get plants, mm -hmm. eat them. In fact, that's what Steve was saying today. He said, I went to the grocery store, he's like, all the cans are gone, and the yeah. produce section is completely yeah. full. Mm -hmm. It's like, that's what we should be eating right now, is the produce. That's the stuff that keeps us healthy. Yeah. And then some healthy grains. Um, and, and then as far as prevention goes, this is called, I'll pass this around, Influenzinum. It's a, it's a, again, like I showed you, the homeopathic. It's a homeopathic flu, I'm not going to call it a vaccine, but it's a, basically a flu remedy. So I think everybody should just be taking that right now preventively. You will not get the flu from it. It's not like a vaccine. It will just give your body what it needs to be able to to fight a vex, uh, to fight a flu. And does that come on Amazon? Amazon, yep. Again, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. sponsored by Amazon. I actually <laughs> know how to use Amazon. <laughs> Very well. And it shows up on your I'm porch. probably at like a 500 level classes <laughs> on Amazon. You actually are. Yeah. You know the back end of Amazon. <laughs> You can teach us a thing or two on that one. And is it same dose for kids yeah. too? Or is it? Five, or is it I would do five beads for an adult and like three beads for a kid. Yeah. 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 And it's saying nobody's sick. Nobody's sick to it like once a week. I don't remember. Yeah. It's just preventative. Yeah. If somebody is sick, once a day. Okay. And then treatment measures. So the exact same stuff vitamin D, vitamin C. Um, Influenzinum, that what I was just passing around. There's a few things, other things you should do. L-lysine is an excellent antiviral. Um, again, just a capsule, a couple times a day. Lomachia, yeah, it does. Lomachium is an herb, so this is an herb tincture that you can buy already pre-made, so you don't have to buy the vodka. Actually, the vodka was out too. Uh, <laughs> I just sent Steve for more of that yesterday, oh he said the, the shelves are clear of that too. So, either people are eating or drinking. <laughs> for whatever reason, or it's That's not. pretty much it. <laughs> yep. So, you can you can buy these already made. Uh, Loma Shima is really good for, um, re for herbal prevention. Thieves or... Um, on guard, you may have heard of it. All those things are really good on the bottom of the feet. Um, dilute them with a little bit of olive oil, put it on the feet. 
It's very good. And also some other homeopathics, and I don't think I have them on there. Um, so you can come up and look at them later, but they're, they're just some good antivirals as well. So homeopathics are super cheap, super cheap, really easy to use, and really actually quite successful. At that conference I just had last weekend, they showed that 1918 was the last flu pandemic. And during that time, 30% of people that were treated with, it's called allopathic medicine, meaning traditional medicine, 30% of people that were treated with traditional medicine uh, died. 1.5% of people who were treated with homeopathy died. So to me, that was enough to convince myself that I should get a few of those little pellets in my house. Uh, what do you think? Is that the influenza? Yeah, and these, there's three others here, so you can write them down after. Okay. They're, they're good ones. Well, I'll say them for the recording. Arsenicum is one. Arsenicum. Spell that, please. A R S E N I C U M. And all of these you can get in this the 30C strength. That's a, that's what the strength means. Mm -hmm. This one's gelsenium, so it's G E L S E M I U M. And the third is bro Bryonia, B R Y O N I A. And would you take all of these at the same time? I would if someone's near you, okay. if someone's sick in your house, if anybody, you know, this, this, these are, per, these are treatments. And they're so these not aren't preventions. Gonna... They're not going to hurt anybody. Okay. No. Nope. These are treatments. These are treatments. Oh, this treatment. is the treatment part. Yep. Okay. If somebody is sick with you, you are going to do this. Yep. What are the shelf life? They last for forever. forever. Okay. Yeah. They nice. probably have an expiration date on them, but forever. This one says August <laughs> of 2024. So, I mean, at least four, four years. Four years. Long time. Yeah. So you'd give it to the person sick and take it as well? I would say, yeah. Because this, this virus is extremely transmissible. So that's the problem yeah. with it, is it's, it's actually not very pathogenic, meaning it's not going to kill a ton of people, but it's extremely transmissible, which means a lot of people are going to get yeah. it. So we just need to know how to treat it, and then we're going to be fine. We just, yeah, so but a lot of people are going to get it. And they can't it. hurt you to take it if you're not actually sick. What about liver cancer? Yeah, just, just, just dose it down. Okay. Yeah, just dose it down. Yeah, go study home, just study home. You have to feel it around on the internet. You'll find a bazillion articles on it. It's really interesting stuff. How does homeopathy? Homeopathy. 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 But you say yeah. homeopathy, homeopathy, homeopathy is, is like the, is the, 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 the study yeah, of homeopathic remedies. Yes. Yes. The, 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 the field of homeopathics is homeopathy. Got it. Yeah, like, yeah. Um, if somebody's vomiting, you can use any of these tinctures on the bottom of the feet or their ears to get it into them. You know, if you're like, gosh, they're not keeping it down. Mm -hmm. You can also use vitamin C and the thieves oil the same way on the feet, on the ears. You can get it in that way. Um, if you try some of these homeopathic um, homeopathic or herbal remedies, someone's going to stick. You know, even if they're throwing up, someone's going to stick. You put it right on their tongue. You can also use acupressure. So let me show you how to do this. You put three fingers across the wrist like this, and where your index finger is on the wrist is where you're gonna push. And that's an acupressure point for nausea. So if you hold it, if you rub it like this, you put your thumb there, you know, two to three minutes, you're gonna really reduce nausea and vomiting. So three fingers, wherever your index finger lies, put your thumb there and rub it. But do you need to be in the middle of your... Nope. So just kind of right there. Yep, just right there. So it should be on the thumb side, like the thumb side. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep, yep, on the thumb okay. side, just right there. Just rub that spot and it will really help with nausea. How about for pregnant people? Same. I'm not pregnant. Same. I'm just <laughs> Same. Mm -hmm. yeah. Asking for a friend. Yeah. <laughs> Asking for a friend. <laughs> yep. Um, what do you do if an infected person is coughing? So a nebulizer or a vaporizer with silver, I don't know if you guys are familiar with silver, colloidal silver you've probably heard of. Nano silver is even better because it's a smaller particle that will get in into other what areas. Is it called? Nano silver? Nano. It's, it's a little, little tiny. Okay. Yeah. The ginger the tea. Under coffee. So ginger tea is great for coughing. So again, you know, you don't have to keep fresh ginger all the time. You can add the dried ginger plus some honey, lemon juice. Um, it will really help that you can steam that. If you need as well, you can make a steam bowl, like I said, with eucalyptus, like we talked about. Um, and then the slippery elm is a good one to store for that too, because it will really help with coffee. Is nano silver, is it a liquid? It is. Okay. And you just put it into it. Yep. Yep. And you can drink, you can have, take as much of that a day as you want. You could okay. drink the, the mm -hmm. nano silver? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I wish I had all
all this is that what I just had What do you off? like does it tell you how much to drink? Is it just like a drop or pill? If you're sick. Okay. Yeah. You cannot do too much of that either. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 